Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to record a video today regarding the differences between the uh, Canon Pro camcorders in the XA range, and that currently comprises the XA 40, 45, 50, and 55. So there's four camcorders in that range, four Pro camcorders. Uh, Canon also have a slightly higher end Pro camcorder uh, product family, uh, which is the XF range of camcorders. Um, now there are videos I spend quite a bit of time researching uh, this purchase because it's probably uh, minus a card the most expensive purchase I've made in a long time uh, so I did spend a ton of time on YouTube watching Canon's videos from trade shows and that and watching other YouTube videos but I have a little hack for finding really good info and that is why I'm starting this video on this tab. And it's, uh, you can see what, I, what I've searched here for is Canon XA40. And then I've used the Google um, Advanced Operator to call it PDFs. And if you don't know how to do that, um, it's file type colon PDF. And then you'll only get PDFs. Now, the reason I do that is there's a bunch of brilliant documents that are usually described as data sheets. And data sheets kind of cut through all the marketing gloss about this is the best product and this is great they'll just tell you straight up um in a in a very factual format so um i find a few data sheets but one of the i think the most useful one i stumbled upon was this one it's on a website called ccisolutions.com it looks like an official canon document that they put together um, and they call it their professional camcorder comparison chart. So don't ask me exactly who this comes from. It looks, it looks to me like it's prepared by uh, CPS, which is Canon uh, Professional Services. That's like their kind of arm for the pro camcorder range. And this will really kind of break down um, the range here. So as you can see, and this is, as to the best of my knowledge, pretty much uh, up to date. You have the XA40 and XA45. They're 4K UHD camcorders and they record a 2.3 to a 2.3, um, 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. Then, and I don't really like the way they order this because it's a little bit illogical, but then if you look at the bottom left corner, we have the XA50 and 55 and their top line de uh, description here is 4K UHD, so there's no change in the top resolution they, they can record but it has a one inch uh, CMOS sensor. So the 40 and the 45 have that one over 2.3 and the 50 and the 55 have that one inch. And when you get that bigger sensor, you're gonna get better low light performance, but consequent consequentially, they're going to cost you more money. So as I've said in a couple of videos about the XA40, um, if I wasn't doing video just as a hobby and I wasn't so uh, constrained by budgetary factors, uh, I would have got the 50 or the 55 because I'm doing this for fun and not currently generating a lot of money from my uh, video related activities. I'm trying to keep it, keep the cost of this reasonable. So therefore I opted for the XA40. It, it wasn't a small difference either. It was about in my locality in Israel, there was about a you know seven or $800 difference between these two camcorders. So that's the XA range. I'm not sure that these guys, the XA11 and XA15 are still being sold really. I haven't found them on the market, but they're kind of the predecessors as far as I'm aware. But these guys are not um, 4K as you can see. They don't have that 4K Ultra HD. So in other words, if you want it, the cheapest camcorders in the XA range are the 11 and the 15, and uh, they're just uh, full HD. So 1920 by 1080. If you want your uh, 4K, you want to jump up to the 40 or the 45. Uh, the difference is that the 45 has SDI and this comparison chart will show you even more small details. And the 50 and the 55 then will give you that one inch sensor. There's a couple more options in the Canon Pro camcorder range. Currently you have this, this slightly strange looking camera. It's called the XE10, XE15 um, and these are kind of more boxy. They've kind of moved away from that uh, from that form factor. And then you have the XF range, three camcorders in the XF range. And this isn't complete. There's also the XF605, but this is, um, I don't know when this was issued, but it, it again, it looks to me pretty, pretty up to date because they don't have the 605, they have the 705. So the last couple of years, let's say. Um, so we have here the 705 is the very top of the range, if you will. Uh, that's their kind of big camcorder. 
And then just below that, you have cheaper um, XFF, XF options, the 400 and the 405. And all these, all these options in XF are one inch uh, CMOS sensors. So here's the chunky comparison chart. And again, this is the kind of thing that I couldn't find on Canon's website. I couldn't find it anywhere else, but it's kind of invaluable um, as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna do some zooming in on the video because it's going to be a little bit hard to see um, all these details, but this is laid out side by side exactly what you're gonna get with each of these camcorders. So if you're looking between the 40 and 45 and the 50, 55, then look at columns um, after the descriptor column here, look at columns three and four, where I have my mouse currently, oh, my mouse isn't gonna be capturing the video. So ignore that, look at columns three and four, the ones that say 50, 55. So just to kind of show what the really minute differences are, let me just read off some of the details. Well, the big difference is that the CMOS sensor on the 5055 is one inch, and on the 4045, it's uh, one over 2.3. The way Canon have laid out this table is that if um, there's no difference, they just put a little hyphen. Uh, that means it's the same. So um, you can. Uh, so what's similar about this? So the image processor on the 5055 is also better. It's dual uh, dig dig IC DV6, and on X uh, A40 slash 45, it's a uh, dig DV6. So you've got a different image processor. Um, I don't know the differences between the DV6 and the dual uh, Digic DV6. Uh, presumably the dual one is better. Uh, that's about as much as I know. Resolutions are, as you can see, exactly the same. Um, the 4K, uh, the, the FHD and the HD 1280 by 720. Full HD being 1920 by 1080 pixels and 4K being 3840 by 2160. There is no difference between the resolutions either the 40 or the 50 shoot at. In terms of the lens, um, it's actually interesting that you have a 15 times optical zoom on the 50, but a 20 times optical on the uh, 40, 45. Um, so that is indeed interesting. And in the aperture, a blade IRS on both. Image stabilization, same. Image stabilization modes the same. Both support powered IS, dynamic and standard AS. Now there is a difference in the ND filters. Um, on the 5055, you have built-in ND filters. It says three stop rotating turret style. That means it's a physical ND filter that has can, uh, three levels of ND. It doesn't specify what those levels are here, um, but you'll find that somewhere else. And on the 4045, you have auto ND. I haven't explored that feature yet, but basically you have actual ND, as in physical built-in ND filters on the 5055 and not on the 40 and 45. The autofocus system is also a, a small difference between these two. On the 40, 45, you have what's called hybrid autofocus. And on the 50, 55, you have dual pixel CMOS autofocus. So you've got a higher end autofocus technology on the 50, 55. LCD size is identical, three inch on both. It's actually handy to know the LCD size because if you're looking for um, a, a lens visor, um, it's based on the size, so that's good to know. They're both three inch LCDs. Um, if there's stuff that I don't know, I'm just gonna not mention, like not, I'm not gonna not mention it, but um, I don't know what this means. Looks standard YDR neutral monochrome. I guess those are kind of um, uh, filters that you can get, not fil as in software filters, um, that are that are pre-configured into the camera um, that doesn't exist in the 40 40 or the 45 but the 50 55 yes um, in terms of recording bit rates and frame rates um, because we've got those dashes it looks like it's identical in the xf avc codec and when we're getting into the um, mp4 codec it doesn't have the Oh, I see there is a difference. So, uh, okay, so you you can do 59.94p in 4K and you can't do that in 4K. So these are the really small differences that you only pick up. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong column. I'm going crazy here. Um, those look the same to me. I, I was looking at the column for the XF705. So if you look at the columns one and two for the top range, you'll see you'll, that you get that... Uh, um, you can guess on the XF 400 and 405, you can get 60 FPS in 4K. 
um, for the 50 and the 45, I don't see any difference. Um, if I'm missing something, you can let me know, but it looks to me like the same frame rates across both MP4 and XF AVC uh, codecs. Um, in terms of the color sample, um, again, that looks the same to me there. Slow and fast motion, HDMI output. Now, SDI output, um, I, this is another difference here. Um, this is the Roy Mon, I'm just gonna highlight it here for a second. So that's what distinguishes the 45 and the 55 is that they have SDI. Um, so that's why there's an asterisk saying 55 only, but otherwise the SDI output looks to be the same. It's 1920 by 1080, uh, 422, sorry, 422 10-bit um, on the 5055 and it's 420 8-bit on the 4045. So these are the really tiny details that really matter uh, if you're looking for SDI or might matter to you and they're just buried in the spec sheet. So that's why I love these data, data sheets slash spec sheets when you can find them. Um, so then regarding the um, audio recording, AAC 16-bit uh, over two channels and LPCM 16-bit over two channels, um, two SD cards in both, neither camera has Wi-Fi or Ethernet. That's really important. And you can see if you look at the other columns on this comparison chart, um, once you get up to the 705 and the, and the XF series, in other words, the 400, 405 and 705, you're going to be getting uh, FTP, IP streaming, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a physical RJ45 Ethernet jack. So um, Ethernet is not something that's in the, um, in the XA, XA series. Um, as far as I can see here, none of them have neither Wi-Fi nor internet. XLR inputs, uh, two XLRs on both. They have phantom power, that's not noted here. Um, regarding the NTSC uh, slash PAL, no and no. Um, remote, wireless and RC V100 on the 5055 and just the RC V100 on the, uh, so there's a different, I'm not familiar with the remote controls for the Canon models. The RC V100 is not a cheap piece of gear, but um, the, even the XA40 does have an input for it. It's actually the same battery as you can see, the B, BPA20 slash A28 for both of them. 4K recording time is 75 minutes or uh, 120 minutes at um, 29 point, uh, in other words, 30 FPS on the 50, 55, it's actually longer on the 40, 45. Um, so that is uh, worth knowing there. Dimensions are uh, four point, let's just look at, I'm gonna look at centimeters, 109. So that's about 11 centimeters by 914 um, by 203 millimeters there. So it looks like there's a really, really pretty small difference, but that the uh, XA50 and 55 are uh, slightly um, taller, but these are really small differences. So they're almost the same. And the weight is the XA50 and 55 is a tiny bit heavier. It's 953 grams and the XA4045 is 740 grams. So those differences are really not very significant, but uh, it is good to know what your camera weighs because if you're uh, putting it on a tripod and accessorizing, tripods uh, typically have uh, payload limits. So uh, at 953 grams, you know, the 5055 is basically a kilogram and the XA4045 is just a tiny bit shy of a kilogram. Um, so you can add that up if you're calculating uh, payloads for a tripod. So that's it. I think the summary really between all this minute detail is that, well, okay, the 5055 has a one inch sensor. That's the key difference between these two camcorders. Um, it does have a, a dual a dig, 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 it's slightly better uh, image processor. The resolutions, max resolutions are the same. They're both uh, 4K capable uh, camcorders. You get your uh, physical ND uh, rings on the 5055. You don't get those on the 4045. Bit rates, video recording, to me, it looks exactly the same. Um, you get your SDI output on the 45 and the 55, but not on the 40 or the 50. Uh, you get two XLR uh, inputs with phantom power on both camcorders and the Pro Audio. There's a slight difference in the remote control capability. It's the RCV100 on both, but there's also wireless remote control on the 5055. I do not know exactly um, what that product is. Someone probably does. 
and they're almost I, they're almost the same shape everything they look almost identical uh the x850 55 is just a tiny bit bigger in one dimension and it weighs just a small bit more as well as you'd expect that probably that extra weight's coming not just from the uh not just from the tiny tiny differences in size but probably from the built-in um nd filters that would probably add a small bit of weight to the uh body too so that's it i hope that was helpful if you're looking at uh if you're on the fence between whether to buy the uh, 40 45 50 and 55 i'll put a link to this pdf that i found lurking around the internet um in the video description and um yeah that's the current this is a current overview of the different pro camcorders that uh canon is selling at this current time these came to market a couple of years ago and um i really like i really like the xa40 so far um if i had extra budget as i said i probably would have bought the 50 i don't need sdi and i don't think most hobbyists uh, do need sdi but if you do if you if you can afford to go for the 50 uh, you're going to get yourself those built-in ND filters and uh, more importantly for most people you're going to be upgrading from a 1 over 2.3 CMOS to a full 1 inch uh, CMOS sensor which should give you a better uh, low light performance which uh, can be important if you're doing a lot of shooting after dark. Thanks for watching if you'd like to get more videos please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel.